Hello and welcome to GLED, your geology educational channel. This video is all about the textures of igneous rocks and what we can figure out from them. Igneous rocks, those rocks that form from molten rock, are defined by two qualities, their mineralogy and their texture. We're going to talk about their texture today. When you take a look at an igneous rock, cycle through this checklist. Crystal size, crystal size variation and crystal orientation. Don't worry, we're going to go through exactly what these terms mean. Crystal size is the diameter of the crystals. You can measure this with a ruler or under a microscope, and you're usually looking to measure the longest axis of the mineral. So if the axis was shaped like a rugby ball like this, you'd measure this length. If it was shaped like a football, it doesn't really matter which direction you'd measure. The crystal size tells us a lot. Firstly, it'll tell you if the crystal is fine, so fine is less than one millimeter, medium between one and three millimeters, or coarse, or the more than three millimeters. Using this information, you can look at the overall texture of the rock. Is it equicrystalline? This means are all the crystals a very similar size, or does it have porphyritic texture? This is when one or a few of the crystals, known as porphyries, are much larger than the rest. The rest here we call the ground mass. You can also look to see if there's any orientation in the crystal texture. Do they all seem to point in a certain way? This is also important in metamorphic textures. Are all the long axes going in the same sort of direction? Here they seem to all be kind of pointing horizontally across the screen. All this helps us work out the origin story of the rock in front of us. Firstly, the size of an individual crystal can tell us how long it stayed hot for. The finer the crystal, the shorter the period of time it stayed hot. Conversely, the course of the crystal, the longer period of time it stayed hot for. So, in an igneous intrusion, where a bit of super hot magma forces its way into some cold country rock, the outside edges of the intrusion will experience higher cooling rates. So the crystal here will be really fine. This area is known as the chilled margin. The opposite is true for the centre of the intrusion. This will be more insulated from the chilling effects of the cold country rock. And so this is where you'll find the coarser crystals. So, using this knowledge, it seems logical that an equicrystalline rock will have been cooled at a consistent rate throughout the rock, so that no parts have stayed hotter for longer than any others. Things get more complicated when we talk about porphyritic textures. This occurs when there's two or more stages of cooling in the rock's history. For example, one stage produced the finer ground mass and a latter stage that stayed hotter for longer produced these larger crystals in amongst the finer ground mass. I mentioned before that igneous rocks are defined by their mineralogy and their texture. For example, basalt and gabbro have the same overall mineralogy but they are defined by their texture. Basalts are fine grained while gabbros are much coarser. We'll discuss in another video how to identify and define intrusive igneous rocks by their mineralogy.